Hello there and welcome back. My name is Elena. And I am Fotios. And this is the Game Court. Today is finally that time of the quarterly look back. Where we look at the last three backs of our gaming and we discuss with you the new to us games we have played. We have plenty of games to, to discuss about. I think it's between 30 to 40 games. Does it increase every time we do this or is it just my impression? It's always, I think, between that 30 to 40. And of course, apart from these 30 to 40 new to us games, we have played so many other games from our collection that, the old we, ones, yeah. that we love anyway. But these are the new to us games. Uh, so we are happy to share, share this with, them you, with yeah. you. First on our list is 1902 Melie. Um, which is published by Looping Games and it's part of the 19xx series and this was a review copy for us Thank you very much um, And this game is about building the scene for the movie uh, A Trip to the Moon Which was a very famous movie at that point By Melier By Melier, that's why Melier is in the name And in this game you are part of the team of Melier You are assistant, assistant director And you try to film the different scenes of the movie, right? Assistant to the director <laughs> To the regional manager <laughs> Um, yeah, so you try to set up the stage or hire actors, not hire actors, like dress actors. Yeah, props as props well. Props as well, everything. Film, edit, cut, paste, all of this cool stuff. And shall we say this game is so good? It is very good. Mm -hmm. mm. The second game we played is uh, Three Ring Circus. It's part of the small Euro games by Devere and one of the designers, as far as I recall, is Fabio Lopiano. I don't remember the name of the other designer, I'm sorry. Um, and in this game, basically, you are trying to hire performers and you try to With perform different. in different cities and in different uh, locations and uh, collect money and eventually collect points. And one cool aspect of this game is the W's cards. You can use them as performers or as uh, money. And uh, also there is a bit of a race because as you perform around the different locations in the US city, the main caravan also moves around and it acts as a timer of the game mm -hmm. and you want to perform the most times possible before. You before, want to perform, exactly. if, if somebody else performs before you, you get less benefits and less points, which is quite painful because it's all about points in this game. Next on our list is Raising Robots and this game was quite hyped at one point and we said we really need to try it, mm -hmm. so we backed it. In this awesome game, you need to build your own robots, you need to make a team of robots and you are rivaling your opponents who are trying to do exactly the same. So you technically have a tableau that you build. It's more like wingspan kind mm -hmm. of situation mm -hmm. where you, you have your first robot and then you can build your tableaus from there and they do activate and when they activate, the whole row activates at once. Uh, but it's not as, as fuzzy as, as uh, wingspan. I think it does look very pretty and it looks very, you know, with lit little um, Einsteins and you have little Marie Curies and all <laughs> of that that will help you along the way. It's very cute and fuzzy and the art is very pretty as well. It looks quite comical. It's quite it's quite a hard game to play. It's quite punchy and it's very it's, crunchy. It's very it's crunchy, very crunchy yes. and it's quite you know it's not as straightforward as you think. Mm. So it's quite deceiving, really. A lot of resource uh, resource conversion in this game. So duct tape to points or to uh, whatever uh, microchips or to batteries, but also a simultaneous action selection system that you select two phases that you want to activate, mm -hmm. and everybody can activate the phases, but it's. The thing is that with how much energy you're going to activate them. The next game we played is called Path of... Uh, civilization. Civilization. I, I don't know if it's Path or Paths of Civilization, sorry, yes. Let me correct yeah. you. Path. It's path of Civilization. And it's uh, a new civilization game that uh, it's kind of uh, similar to Seven Wonders, but a bit more crunchy, a bit more hefty, but uh, hefty only in terms of, you know, the stuff you have around. But there are a lot of things in this game, isn't it? A lot of things, yes. Mm. You can take completely different paths from your opponents, but equally, it plays in about an hour. It's very fast to play. In this game, the designer relies a lot on card buying. There's a lot of card buying, and there's a lot of resource management. It's all about different parts of a civilization. It's a path of civilization. <laughs> <laughs> different parts of civilization that you try to build, and you cannot fall behind in one because then you won't catch up and it's quite hard. You most likely are going to lose, but you can, you know, thrive in one or two. And I think just like Seven Wonders, this is what you would do in this game too. The next game we played is Flip Town. And was this, did we buy it or was it, we, did we buy it? No, we actually bought it second hand. We so, bought it yeah. second hand. Yeah. Did we buy it second hand? Because it's not really available in the UK, you see. Oh, yes. Interesting. 
Yeah. Well, we we played Flip Town eventually. It's a very nice game. It's a flip and ride that uh, takes place in the wild, wild west. Um, and what you technically do is... In which west? In the wild, very wild west. Okay. <laughs> And what you do here is you try to create a poker hand with the cards in uh, the game that are available to you. Out of three cards, you can use one towards your poker hand and the other two to actually dictate which action you're going to take and how many steps you're going to do of it. You obviously can modify some of these by, you know, adding a bit of gold here and a bit of money there and stuff like that. You can do all of that, but the idea is to just explore the wild, wild west. Um, you can do some looting, you can go to the cemetery, you can go do some mining, mm -hmm. you can go to the city and visit different buildings that, that give you a lot of things. Um, and you have to do this, you are technically a robber, you have to do this without getting any wanted signs because the mm -hmm. more wanted signs you have, uh, the more popular you become and people know you more <laughs> and then the sheriff will come and arrest you, which happens at the end of every, every round. At the end of every round, if you have too many wanted signs, then the sheriff will arrest you and then you lose the game. <laughs> yes, this game is very nice because the, the cards you flip are actually a common deck of playing cards. And the fact I like about this game is a lot of combinations in this game. It reminds me a lot of uh, That's Pretty Clever, mm -hmm. but also a lot of Hadrian's Wall because it has a lot of different buildings in the city that you can explore. You cannot use them all of them in one game. You have mm -hmm. to select what you're using in each game, so it has many different aspects you can explore, a lot of variability. Really like this game. The next game we played is called Age of Eon. And Do you remember which one is this? Because you said the first second, but I don't remember whether you said, you know, which game is this? <laughs> what do you mean? You know, you said the first game, the second game, and then I didn't say Oh, that I don't know. I the 15th <laughs> game is, <laughs> it's Age of Eon, and this is a, we received a prototype copy of Age of Eon, mm. and we published a preview video. Age and that will, you will find it right here. Right there, exactly. For you. <laughs> and uh, Age of Eon is um, basically a dueling card game, strategy game, in the sense of, uh, let's say, Erland and Sea, if you wish. So you have some uh, demigods that you control, and you have some uh, attack cards, which are, can be physical attacks or magical attacks. And you have uh, three fields, which are three columns, and you can play up to three cards on each uh, column. And basically, you try to defeat your opponent. It's a very nice game with a bit of uh, asymmetric powers over there as well. The Kickstarter campaign has already concluded, but if you are interested in the game, you can uh, check out the late pledge manager whenever this opens. Yeah, I think adding the demigods to this game does give it a different kind of flavor, which I really enjoyed compared to, for example, Air, Land and Sea. Uh, you do have the same cards and your opponent does too, and the fields are common for everybody. And it might be that you might get an advantage because y your sign might come out, mm -hmm. and they get mixed up and chosen at the beginning of every game. Um, your homeland. Mm, that's what it is, <laughs> the homeland. Um, and every demigod does the same, but more and more and more. So I think, you know, this did make a bit of a difference in the game and it made me enjoy it quite a lot. And then there was a row on Facebook because we are on this like Facebook page thingy and people were all rowing about this shop that had a lot of discounts. So we said we're going to go and check because who doesn't like a discount? And we found something. And we found King Domino Duo and we bought it and it was like dirt cheap, like mm. four pounds or something, uh, something like, like that. that three pounds or whatever. So I, we, I didn't even know what the game did, but we bought it and then we played it at home. We're not big fans of King Domino, to be honest with you at all. Maybe you have played a couple of versions of King Domino. But this is like a roll and write kind of situation. Yeah, this is roll and write. Only, only two players, King Domino Duel. And we played it. Okay. It was all right. Yeah, and, you know, and, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a roll and write and that was it. And we put it in the cell pile. And then I printed this uh, solo game. It's called Orchard. Actually, I have backed the newer version, which is called, I think, Forage. So I said, okay, let me try the older version. Actually, in this uh, in this uh, trimester, we have, I have tried both of Orchard and another one, it was called Grove, I think. You have only tried Orchard, right? Yeah. It's a solo game only with a bit of uh, card laying and, you know, as you match the uh, colors or the trees, if you wish, the dice value increase and decrease and you collect more and more and more. And that's your point, basically, at the end of the game. Yeah, if you tile them up in the wrong way, so you pile, uh, let's say, apples over... I don't even know what you have, lemons. Lemons, what whatever. whatever. <laughs> if you pile two fruits differently, then they rot, um, and then you cannot place anything uh, there anymore. If you get too many rotten trees, then you lose the game. So I think it's a clever way of, you know, 
piling tiles or cards if you wish um, that will increase values of die if you pile them correctly or the die if they don't and I'm not a big solo fan player but I think this game was quite nice very clever and this designer Maktak has as we said three of these games also was the first one then he made the Grove which I also printed and uh, played I don't think you have tried that I think it's further in our list but we don't have to discuss about it further on but then again, as I was saying, we are expecting Forage and all of them are small games, only 18 cards and some dice which you don't really roll, you just allocate as you overlap your cards and you collect more and more that's your increasing points at the end of the game so if you want to try any of these three games make sure you go to BDG, print the files and try them and give it a try Next game on the list is Café, which takes place in the 20th century in Portugal. And what you technically do in this game is you try, you are a producer, mm -hmm. so you plant coffee beans, you harvest them, you dry them, and then you roast them, and then you deliver them to different coffee shops within Portugal. Mm -hmm. And different coffee shops require different uh, beans, roast, different types yeah. of different rows, exactly, mm -hmm. which represent, are represented with four different cubes, colors, I think. Yeah, it's a small puzzle with overlapping cards again. Mm -hmm. Interesting manufacturing game, but uh, it didn't really engage us as much, I would say. No, I mean, you can't. It's, it's all about the tiling of the mm -hmm. cards, isn't it? It's like piling of the cards. And the more you have of one symbol that are, is interconnected, the more you of the action that you could actually do. And I think that's quite nice. Like Witchstone, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like Orchard a little bit, actually. Yeah, 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 it's very yeah, similar yeah. to Orchard. You have to put them together, you have yeah, to yeah. cluster them you together. You have to cluster them. Yes. Um, and that will give you better opportunities. Mm -hmm. But so on, I think, apart from that, which is a clever mechanic, it didn't really work very well for us. Yes, I mean, it was a bit of the samey. We played a few times, again, it went to our sale, <laughs> sale pile. <laughs> And then we played one of our most anticipated games of the previous year. Finally! Yeah, that was Evacuation. And we had high hopes about this game. Uh, it's a design by Vladimir Shutsi. Who Which has we like very much. Yes, we also like from him uh, Underwater Cities and uh, Woodcraft and many other games. Um, we only played once and we really want to play again. This is a game about, you know, your, your planet is dying and you have to evacuate your planet and go to another planet. So this game, you start with a lot of resources. In the middle of the game, you have very few resources. And towards the end of the game, you have even more resources. Uh, so it has this weird arc in the game. Well, we played once. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how I feel about this game just yet, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a complicated game. So it's a heavy game. So I really want to explore it again. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have an informed opinion about it yet. Yeah, I think we only played it once and mm -hmm. I think it was a bit of a bummer because, you know, if you don't, if we don't play it one time and then we play it very shortly after, it's quite hard to come back to it because you kind of forget a lot of things. And it was like, I really like the idea of the traveling, you, everything that you had from a planet to another. Mm -hmm. And I think that was very nice and you can get some benefits in there, looking at how many things you can move across and where you can and plant and stuff like that and population. So I think that was nice because i've never seen it anywhere else before but i feel that the game was quite clunky it was a bit mm. whether it's because we've not actually placed ourselves properly i'm not sure and we've only played it once but for first game it was a bit hard to get hold of mm. yeah it's about some actions required to spend resources from the new planet or the old planet and you have to have these resources saved in the new planet or the old planet mm. it's like playing some sort of 18xx game and have uh, and you have like two banks one your personal wealth and the other one the company wealth and depending you know which money you spend sort of um yeah definitely want to play again to to review it properly but our first impression was not a uh, 100% positive yeah a bit too convoluted i think mm. and then i don't know how but we managed to play quicks longo longo uh, and we played quicks shorto <laughs> so, so, quicks regular regular <laughs> We played the original Quicks and then we played the longer version. I don't know why we have the longer version. It's just as good as, as the short version. It's a quick roll and write. And it's, it's, it's longer. It goes from 12 to 50, <laughs> 50 to 16. No. Um, that's it. That's it. It has a dice of eight faces. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it takes uh, maybe three, four minutes longer to play than the normal Quicks. Well, it's in the uh, name, you see. Longo. It's Longo. Longo. <laughs> longo. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it, I think, more than Elena, because you get more points and it feels more satisfying. I like it. I'm not saying I don't like it, but I don't see much of a difference. But, like, why why is there a version of a quick longo with a couple of more numbers? I don't know. And then I went to a trip and we played a lot of uh, smaller games. And one of these games we played uh, was uh, Regicide. 
which again is played with a regular deck of cards, and it's a cooperative game of uh, secret communication, of no communication basically, and you try to defeat uh, the buddies, the the jays, the queens, the jays, the joker, not the jacks, the queens, jacks. the kings, by playing different cards, they have particular health, and then you can convert them to be your own hand. And it's a cool little game, and again, it's another game you can play with a regular deck of cards. You don't need anything else apart from that. Maybe a little play rate to remind you what's what. What's what, yeah, what yeah. does what. Exactly. So that was a ready site. Yeah. Fun, engaging, quick, yeah. quick. Plays uh, two to four. I think there's a solo mode as well, but we played a two. It, it was nice. And then because we were on a trip, we would obviously go to a board game shop and see what games they have in there. And, and we bought one. And they had plenty of games, but yeah, we, we wanted to buy something different and we bought Sheep and Sheep. And sheep. Mm -hmm. sheep and Sheep is called. You hold sheep in this game and you have to place them in a way that the more of the same, the merrier. And you obviously have some cards at the end that score for everybody and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I found it a bit too convoluted and there were way too many rules of placing and I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all really. It should be a, an easier game to play to be honest with you and uh, the box is too big for what it is. They could have just made the box super small because apart from the cars there's nothing else in there to actually play and I don't know. I don't know why like you know there are so many like little nitty gritty rules that this can go here and this can go there and it cannot go there. Oh lord I didn't have time for that so I didn't enjoy yeah. it. That's a bit, it's a bit of this increasing sequence of numbers I that don't. makes a bit complicated. Listen, yes. numbers in my head make no sense, so I cannot be playing that. I don't understand that. I'm not going to play. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like played yeah. it almost, but not completely because I can do numbers and I don't, I don't understand. And then still on our trip, we played another game that is uh, another print and play game that uh, we backed on Kickstarter. Uh, it's one of these games that you pay four or five dollars for pounds and then they send you the PDF files and you print them off and you play like that. This is called One Page War and it's basically... One page game? It is one page game, yes. So there are two sides, you have five theatres and you try to dominate these theatres to win your opponent and the way you dominate the theatres, basically you roll a die, a six-sided die, a normal die, and both of you use the same number, but you have to use them on different theatres. And then you create some sort of poker hands, if you wish, with a die, like straights or uh, pairs or three of a kind or full full houses and stuff like that. And if you have a better, a stronger hand than your opponent, you win that theatre. But also if you close a theatre, you gain the ability to the theatre. So it's kind of the games like, you know, Erland and Sea or yeah. Ham Hanamikoji, yeah. or these kind of games, but in a print-to-play fashion, very fast to play. And then we played a review copy of Expedition, sent to us by Jamie Stagmeyer, thank you very much. And Expeditions is a sequel to uh, the main game, which is Scythe. Um, you're technically post-Scythe here, and the war has ended, uh, but you want to go and explore in the very cold tundra. So you have some leftovers, machines, mixes that you could use to go and explore the very cold tundra and technically is more about expedition rather than fight itself there's no conflict with anybody else neither in, amongst each other so it's all about the expedition and removing some of the corruption that was in, you know from the war it's a very nice game we really enjoyed it it has a nice element of uh, deck building that have your cards open there and you also sign workers to make your play even stronger and if you want to watch our full review of this game you can uh, check the link up here and then our friend uh, mark came over and uh, we played a game called ora et labora mm. it's an uwe rosberg design and we are trying to play as many games from uwe rosberg because we are preparing for uwe rosberg let's talk about uwe rosberg designer games uh, video. We've been playing for a long, long time now, haven't yes. we? A lot but of games. <laughs> we are expecting uh, fields of uh, air anytime soon in our post. So I think soon Maybe after, after that, yes, mm. correct. But Ora and Labora, it has aspects of uh, both Agricola and Caverna and even Oranienberg Canal or Glass Road, if you wish, with this. Uh, the wheel. The wheel, exactly, mm. for the resources. It's a very nice game. It's about uh, resource uh, conversion and you also build some buildings which allow you to uh, do cooler stuff, more uh, stronger stuff, mm -hmm. but also how you place your buildings. It's important because, you know, the vertical and horizontal position of the buildings, if it is aligned properly with other buildings, it's going to give you even more points. And you can expand your map as well. Exactly. Ah, yeah, you can expand your map. Some buildings yes. only go in some places by Correct. the mountain or by the water. <laughs> you do Correct. have to expand that too. So it's, yeah, it's like a little civilization game where you expand everything. And so, I don't think you need to feed anybody. Oh, oh yes, correct. 
compared to every other Uwe Rosberg game, yeah. apart from Patchwork, that is right. So if you <laughs> want to try a civilization game from Uwe without, you know, killing a lot of sheep and <laughs> feeding the lot, this is the game for you. I think you still have sheep. <laughs> you do, but you don't eat the sheep. Anyway, a cool aspect of this game is we were towards the ending of our game session, right? And uh, we said, okay, let's play one more game. And uh, we checked the box of the game because Mark hasn't played the game either, so he came prepared to do the game. But we checked the box of the game and it said like a, know, something like three hours, right? And we're like, nah. But we played it eventually, anyway. And it was not like that. It was maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, mark. it's. I think it's super fast. And, and four players, right? You, you know, like one one turn might be. I'll take three resources, like you know, very fast. Three wood, and that's what you do. That's it. And then your next round would be. I'll buy this building, and that's it. It doesn't have very many combos and stuff like that. But it plays super fast. And what you do is like bam, 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 bam done. And unless you are the first player of the round, that you take two actions, like the first and the last action. Every other player takes, takes just one, one action, action there. Yeah. So it's progressing very fast, very fast. Very nice game. I really enjoyed it actually. Mm. Then we played Scholars of the South Tigris, published by Garfield Games. And uh, we're going to briefly talk about it because we only have like 30 seconds uh, to talk about it. <laughs> if you want to like a more in depth review um, of our opinions about the game, uh, you can follow the link up there and that will take you to our game of the month for last uh, month. Yeah, for March. It was our game of the month for much. We really like this game. It's a super duper game. I think probably the most complex we've played from Garfield so far. Mm, yes, I, I, think I think that's a fair assessment. Is. And technically mm. what you do is you go throughout the desert, you get a lot of scrolls that you need to trans translate to Arabic. So you, you, know, you get a bunch of translators, you use them in many, many different ways. And then you take all these scrolls already translated into the towers and you get a lot of points. There's a lot of things to do in the game, but it, it works pretty well. And this game will definitely remind you what is a primary color and what's a secondary color and how you can mix uh, red and yellow to make orange out of it, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody didn't know really, but yeah. <laughs> hey. It's a, it's a very good game, very good design. Do you know that in the third part, Inventors, they say it's even, even more complex? Is it? Yeah. I want to know. I'm quite curious because in this game, they've actually used the dice instead of meeples. And although they have dice and meeple as yeah. well, so they use dice as uh, meeples with different colors that do different things, primary and secondary colors. Mm -hmm. um, and I really want to see what they use in Inventors as a gimmicky mechanic. It might be dice as well because they had dice in the way first as well. So they might be using dice as well. It might be fair, yeah. I think that's fair. But I think they will definitely be using these uh, ast uh, asterisks, the you know, the wooden asterisks for the influence. Oh, the influence. Yes, the, the influence Some markers, people don't yes. like the influence. Yes. And the next game that we would like to discuss about is Babylonia. This is a game I played uh, without Elena. I played with Mark and Evangelos, two of, of our contributors in the channel. Somebody needs to go to work. Yeah, I know, right? Somebody needs to work. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Babylonia and many other games we're going to discuss later on in the video is designed by Rainer Kanizia, the doctor. And uh, <laughs> the doctor, and it's uh, basically what you do in this game, you place discs on the map, on different hexes on the map, to surround uh, different regions, to get some points. It's a very cool game, and uh, the way the scoring works is actually very cool. And you randomly draw discs from your bag. And it reminds me quite a lot of the game called Caesar, Caesar Rome in 20 minutes, which is only a two-player game. But uh, when I was discussing about this with Mark and Evangelos, they didn't share the same opinion with me, so maybe just me, but I, I <laughs> felt like... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a very nice game. I think we managed to play two games at three players in about 90 minutes, two of these games. We really, all of us really enjoyed it. That's Babylonia. And if we're talking about Ryan Canizia, we played Kariba as well, because Kariba is... Well, how did we play Kariba? Well, Evangelos left, uh, the, left his Kariba yeah, yeah, yeah. over here. Yeah. Well, the, Mark and Evangelos came to record the Ryan Canizia video, and he, they brought with them a lot of uh, Ryan Canizia games to display around here, and then they left a few games back as well. <laughs> and I just, I was just, I was thinking I was at the computer and I was editing, and I saw the game and I was like, it was next to me, and I was like, what does this do? And then we played it like straight away. And it is a, such a fun game. It's it's not very much of much though, really. It's about animals that go <laughs> to the water, like a lake kind of thing. Um, and they go and drink water and you can put them only in ascending order and all consecutive. And they go from one to eight, I think. And eight yes. is the mouse. Yeah. So eight is the elephant. 
it is the elephant one, one is, is a mouse, mouse so yes. it's like the mouse at number one scares the elephant at eight the elephant at eight scares i don't know what is at seven and so on and so forth you yeah. know you have like the zebra and this and that and they have all the animals around and one is more powerful than the other mm. and they go like that in a circle and this game is all about collecting cards every card represents a point and you can only collect the card that's next to you available that one to the right one to the lower value, yes. The one to the lowest value, whichever that, I don't know. The one to the lowest value, as long as you make a set of three wherever you place the card. So you place the card in one place and you collect from the adjacent one lower to you. Super quick, super fast. I enjoyed it very much at two and it's very different than when we played it at four, although both are very enjoyable. Yeah. So it's a very nice little game that plays in two. Most little games don't play in two, but it's very enjoyable. But our uh, 10 minute review of Kariba. <laughs> The next game in our list is another game from Rare Canisia. A, a lot of Rare Canisia hmm. game, games this month. This is called At the Office. This was published last year and it's a simple roll and write where you have a hierarchy of people and you try to give them skills. And you know, to be a proper hierarchy, the person on the higher of the skill of the pyramid must have skills of higher value or equal to people at the lower levels of the hierarchy. And as long as you do that, you get more points. There's a bit of center collection as well. The most, the, the first person to do all the reds gets extra all points. All the people dressed in red, that is. Correct. All, all, all the, the people, people with glasses. With glasses yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a it's a fun little game. I mean, the story says that you're in the office and you try to, you know, get a bit of goss here and there and just go up the ladder, but you literally just tick some boxes in a pyramid. And then we played Ingenious, designed by none other than Ryan Canetia. <laughs> I swear to God, you're going to get enough of us with our run you can eat. Yeah, yeah, you are. Wave. Uh, Ingenious is an abstract game. It was Mark's game. And I think now it's our game. We actually have the, the two-player version only of Ingenious. I think it's two to four usually, mm. but we only have the small box, which also fits our purposes. In this game, basically, you just have to take these little pieces, which represent, they're more like little like two hexes kind mm -hmm. of situation, more like witch stone. Yeah. It's exactly the same, but here you just have to match symbol to symbol. And I think the most difficult bit about this game is to understand how they actually score because they don't score just by adjacency, they score by adjacency and to how many they actually have around them. So if you have a row of like three to the to the one side, to one part of it, then it will score as many as they have. If it's just surrounded by ones, then it will just count one independently. So you have to trickily think of how to put them in because it does not score as every other game that we've played. And it took me a little while to actually understand. I think there are like five colors and stuff like that. Mm. And I think the main six. idea, six colors, a million gazillion colors and they all have like little plastic pins that you move up and oh my goodness I feel like my carpal tunnel is going to you know, kill me if I because you have to like pinch it slowly and put it up uh, as many points as you get up and the idea is at the end it scores for the lowest that you actually have that's mm -hmm. what it is so you can be top on most of them and if yellow is on three points then you score three points what I like about this game is abstract game okay but I said that didn't I? I, I don't know I, I, I yeah, said but, that already but what I like is uh, Renan Canizia designed this game it's a very nice game. It works perfectly by itself. But then he took this concept of double hexes and implemented it in other games like Witchstone. Like Witchstone. Mm -hmm. And uh, where you do clusters of actions to make the actions more powerful. Uh, yeah. Like in Cafe, right? So mm. yeah, it's a very cool aspect. Yeah, Ingenious was uh, designed in 2006. It's an old game, yes. It is an old game. Very nice though. Although, you know, somebody can become quite nasty about it and block you and take all the yellows, which is very painful. Well, you are the winner of Blockus, you are the champion of Blockus, so I can be Blockus as well, whatever. Before we go to the next uh, Anacanisia stream of games we have played uh, this quarter, we also played uh, Galactic Cruise, and uh, the publisher sent us a preview copy of Galactic Cruise, which uh, just finished uh, the campaign on Kickstarter. They actually, it was actually a very successful campaign, well, well done to them. And Galactic Cruise is a heavy Euro game where you try to build uh, space shuttles uh, to for people to go on holiday, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, for spe space vacation. It's a very cool game. We have both a full preview video, but also a short uh, uh, playthrough or run through, if you wish. You can both, you can check these videos here. It's a very cool game. It will fulfill it in a year's time or so. So yeah, that's Galactic Cruise. And then we went to Pat and Evangelos' house and we played some games. And one of them was Lama Card Game. And we, I think we mentioned Back it. Back to Reiner. <laughs> 
We mentioned that in the previous yeah. uh, quarterly look back, we played Lama the Dice Game. Mm -hmm. It's the same game, but it's just with cards. So you technically just pile up from the smallest number to the highest number consecutively, mm -hmm. as many cards as you have, either the same number or above it. And the last card that goes on top is the Lama. The one that runs out of cards first is the winner. And the ones that have cards in their hands, you just add whatever you have in your card that's separate, different. Um, and these are the minus points that you get. Pish, pash, posh. Easy peasy. Nice game. And then again, the same evening, we played another running an easy game. I mean, it's not our, our normal complex kind of games that we play, but they are refreshing. They're very they are, nice, yeah, aren't they? Exactly. Yes. And this game is another new design from running an easy. It's called MLEM, Space Agency, and it has cats. Which astronauts. Are, which are astronauts. Castronauts. Ca castronauts. Castronauts. Yes. And in, in a sense, the game is quite similar to uh, Galactics, for one. You have a, a lot of push your luck in the game. There is some sort of slight cooperation because as you select a cut of different abilities, you put them on the shuttle and then you try to push the shuttle as further as possible up to the outer space. And the longer you stay in the shuttle, the more points you're going to get by you know uh, getting out of the shuttle last. But also the high possibilities for the shuttle to crash and get basically no points. And the game ends when somebody has placed all the eight cuts out somewhere, either a planet or a, or a satellite or somewhere in outer space. Or you've crashed too many times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or crashed too many times, yes. So it's a pushy-like -like game from the Doctor. It's a very nice game. And it, it has cuts. It has cuts. It comes with a very nice play month, very nice uh, production value as well. Mm. We really recommend this game. Then we played Heckmeck am Kartenek. Or Picomino. Or Picomino. And we played it because I was editing um, the video, Ryan Canizia video that the guys have done. And Mark talks about this game within his video. And I was like, well, that sounds like a very interesting game. And we played it. And Jesus, it's such a good game, isn't it? It's very good It game. is such a good game. I really like it. And it's about rolling dice. And you have these little like domino pieces kind of thing. And you have to roll dice. You have to have at least one worm onto your dice. So like six is the worm, isn't it? Mm. And whilst you roll, you have to have at least one worm. And then you can roll as many times as you want. But you have to keep at least one die or a cluster of dice every time you roll. And you have to have um, a sum of at least 21, I think it is. I don't, I don't know, 20 yes. something, I think is the smallest one. The idea is you keep it in front of you. Somebody can steal it if they do get that number until it's covered. So you can cover it with another one and then that becomes vulnerable. But all in all though, I think it's very, very enjoyable with all the little worms and stuff like that. It's a very nice game. It's about those probabilities and a bit of luck. Again, push your lucky, mm -hmm. again with dice. And it's one of these games that, again, uh, Rania Canizia uh, changes the dice value. So in this case, as you said, we don't have six, but have but the you warm, have a warm, right? Which counts, I think, as five when it comes to collecting these tiles. Well, one of them. Yeah. Yes, it's a very, very, very nice game. Mm. And I think it plays very well in two as well. And as you may know, we're big fans of uh, a game called Blocus. It's an abstract game. And uh, Mark bought us the two version Blockus game. Blockus is one of the uh, favorite Elena's uh, games. I think you're it's on, in your top 10, isn't it? Yes, it's definitely yes. my top 10 and I scored zero. Not All once, yes, but more than all. once. I think she, she beat me again by far. It's a very nice game. I don't think we have to talk more about it. It's Blockus in two. Blockus, yes. And then we were in the kitchen cooking and we every time we cook together we watch some sort of video on YouTube of some sort. And I think we were it's watching... Board games, right? board, Yeah, it's normally about board games. And we were watching, I think, Think a Themer and I think the guys mentioned a game called Coffee Rush, mm -hmm. which we eventually bought and played. And I think they were quite excited about the game. And technically what you do in this game is you have little orders that you need to do. And the orders start, start from the top and they get, you know, they move across as time passes and the time passes very fast <laughs> and you what you do is you move onto a, a little map a little grid with your two meeples that you have available and you collect resources and with those resources you just make the orders themselves and that's kind of what the game is about mm. and you can exchange some of the orders that you have done for like perks in the game on the map and stuff like that but it's about orders um i don't think i enjoyed it very much i think <laughs> after a while it was kind of samey yeah. and i thought it was um i don't know i felt a bit like oh my goodness most of my orders are not going to be mm -hmm. fulfilled and most of them have not been fulfilled and it was a bit like but I really want to fulfill everything, but you won't be able to f fulfill more than half. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how is that even a possibility? But never never mind. You know, it was a good game to try. I, the production is lovely. You know, you have two meeples only in a two-player game. Mm -hmm. uh, you have played more than two, but in a three or four-player game, you only have one meeple. Oh, even better. Yeah. <laughs> the, o the only true decision in the game is how you move this meeple around the grid to collect the resources. Uh, the game was not very exciting for us. We even tried a real-time 
a version that we invented of the game. Oh like, you God, know, that was some a mess. Timer. <laughs> you have, Jesus Christ. You have some sort of chess timer to, because, you know, it's coffee rush, right? So you have to do your order soon. So we add in the game as an element of uh, dexterity as well. You have to, you have these little cups that you have to put all the ingredients in. Like milk, yeah. ice, foam and stuff like that, whatever you put. Production-wise, the game is very nice. It's very nice, isn't it? The production is pretty nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. But gameplay, not as much. And then we played San Kore, which uh, has a theme that is... Uh, closer to what I do for a living. It's about uh, universities and teaching and uh, books. And, um, you know, you have four different uh, sciences. You have maths, you have uh, astrology, astrology, theology, and, and law. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. And you try to progress your students through different classes to make them better and better, to eventually graduate them. And there is there are three basic resources in the game. There is salt. Why not? There is gold and there are books. Books make sense, but gold, salt, sure. I'm not sure. I mean, anyway, it's 14th yeah. century in Timbuktu. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I would like to collect these prestige uh, tokens, which uh, they're going to score based on the distribution of the books in the library. Like, you know, if you don't contribute the same books in the library, they're not going to score as much your prestige tokens. I don't know. I find it a bit convoluted as a game. Um, I don't think we enjoyed it very much. No, it had too many little rooms. I don't. I didn't understand why there were so many different rooms. I think that the theme was not really well integrated, apart from the fact that it had books and it had some meeples that represented students. Mm -hmm. I don't think the game was integrated enough. The theme was integrated enough to actually understand that this is what you're doing. And it was more about like moving up a track and exchanging resources to do something else in a different room. And I just felt like it didn't really have... I didn't understand what I was doing at some point. I was like, I'll just do it for the <laughs> sake of getting a sword. Yeah. yeah, and it's supposed to be the continuation of Murph by the same designer. So um, we didn't enjoy Murph either. So it's two out of two for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least we're convinced. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but we know that other people like the game. So check the game out if it is for you. But it's definitely it not for us. It might be for us, you, but, for, but you know, my mind doesn't understand. And then you backed The Battle of Versailles. Mm -hmm. The Battle of Versailles. Um, and it's a game published by Salt and Pepper Games, mm -hmm. and it's the same company that published The Hand, and we were very excited about The Hand because we really like The Hand, yeah. and I think we were one of the few ones that like The Hand. Never mind, yeah. The Hand is a very good game. Yeah, this company specializes in solo games, so like uh, Witchcraft, for instance, or Resist, but also in two-player games like mm. Hunt and Battle of Versailles. So we said we're going to give it a go. So technically, it's a battle in between designers, and there's designers from the US and designers from France. France. Uh, France, uh, where you know the design world is already established, so the US is trying to come and make a name for themselves. And the game has a lot of asymmetry in, in regards to how you score or what objectives you're trying to fulfill, but. Uh, uh, for me, it didn't give me any satisfaction at all, apart from moving this little model on the catwalk. On the catwalk, yes. yes. On the catwalk. Which represents different phases of the round. Otherwise, I don't know, I find it a bit deflating for my face. And I feel that France, particularly in this game, is very, very unequal power wise compared to like the more US. Powerful. Yes, yes, I feel that France has so much more power, and I don't know how the US would always ever win, ever at any point. And I, I don't know why they're so different. And I don't know if US would ever have enough power to, you know, catch up. And I feel it's a bit deflating from that perspective. Because you know, you're like, you know from the get-go that you're going to lose. What's the point in playing yeah. the game? At least thematic in the center. Thematic is nice. They have nice dresses and they have designers and stuff like that. But what if you're not into designers? Yeah. And then we bought another game, which is called Curious Cargo. It is designed by the same designer that did the pipeline. And in both games, you have basically to do networks of pipes. And yeah, it, it, this is the small version, two-player version, two-player game, the Curious Cargo. And you try to have these uh, different uh, pipes connected to machines and also to your trucks to load them with chemicals or with batteries. But then your opponent tries to steal these uh, these resources from you to, to, to score even more points. Um, I played this game twice. We played once and I played one more time with Mark. And okay. we tried both the, uh, the version that has only two color pipes and the version that has three color pipes. And I find it very challenging, like very challenging, mm. very hard. You just have to like... You have to time every single thing you do. You have to time it just right because when you depart your trucks, because you have the option to de depart the trucks, you have to you have to decide how much of a truck do I want? Is it a five size truck or six five? Because this is going to move the truck that's in front of it, or it's going to position that truck in mm -hmm. such a way exactly. that you can either load mm -hmm. onto because the trucks are not completely empty. They have some places where you cannot place, or they already come with stuff. 
and if you push it forward is your opponent going to put their stuff in as well so you know you try to do both things in a timely way it's well the time aspect doesn't ma doesn't bother me as much if it wasn't for the lack of draw and, and in this case you know you have the time aspect which you have to manage but you have the lack of draw from drawing the tide with the pipes and you want particular shapes of pipes to connect and them colors, properly. Yeah. And also you have the lack of draw for the tracks as well. So because you cannot just select a track, you have to get a track of the card you have. So combining this all together, I find it extremely, extremely difficult. Yeah, I was I was drawing cards at one point like a wild woman and I couldn't find the pipe that actually I needed to fit okay, onto. Okay, wild woman. <laughs> <laughs> wild woman. Um, and that was quite frustrating. Mm. I'm like, how many cards do you actually do? You need to go through the whole deck to find a card that you need, mm. which was, you know, too much luck in a game that you need to time yourself very well. And then we played a game called Sosig, which is definitely the smallest game, board game that we have in our collection. It's about mm. yay big. I would um, agree with that, yes. And it's one of the funniest mm. games we played in quite a while. And if you want to know more about... Sosig, be the winner. The wiener. That the wiener. Like the wiener. <laughs> yes. If you want to see Sosig be the wiener and what our opinion is about it, please have a look right up there. And then we played Salt and Sea. And again, we make it. We made it this game our game of the month for the last month, for uh, March. And if we have enough uh, <laughs> videos, if <laughs> videos link, you can find the link here. Or there. Yeah, or, or somewhere, yes. And Salt and Sea is a game designed by, the, published by De Vere. And again, it's part of this small uh, Euro games. It's a big game. It's a very big and hefty game in a small, small box. box. Mm. Worker placement. Double use cards as money or, or, or as work placement positions. A very little bit of resource management. Yes, a little bit of resource management. A bit of uh, stock holding as well. Very good game. Oversimplified economic game, isn't it? Yeah, you can check our full review there or whatever. Yes, down in the comments. Yeah. It will be somewhere. Yep. Then we played Marabunta. And in Marabunta, you are. Marabunta. 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 And it's about you being an ant and try to be the super duper ant colony and fight other ant colonies. And it's more about area majority that you manage by rolling a bunch of dice. And the very cool aspect mm. about this game is that when you roll the dice, you have a little tile every round that gives you an extra perk. And you can use that tile and the dice to split them in such a way that you can get whatever you want and give your opponent what they might. You know, you have to split them in a way that everybody's kind of happy and you don't leave one person with all the benefit. And I think that's a very cool aspect of the game. Yes, but uh, the cool aspect is that you split. And, but I choose. You choose first, yes. So if you keep it in two groups, so yeah. I'll, I'll choose whatever I fancy first. So. so you have to split it in a way that, you know, you give something to your opponent, but you kind of yeah, take exactly. something for yourself. Really cool. The only thing I have to add uh, here is that if you continue to play uh, Ryan Canisa games in this tempo, we will still not have enough time in our lifetime. She will still publish more games <laughs> than push. we have the ability to play, I think. And then we bought this uh, very quirky game. It's called Findorf. It's uh, designed by Friedman Fries. And this is a second game that we play from this designer at a Friday. We haven't played his uh, big game that is called Power Grid. We haven't played Power Grid, but this Findorf is uh, an economic manufacturing game. Apparently it plays very well, it plays better at two than any other player count. It plays from one to five, but don't go with five, you have two less actions. Two, yeah. But with two, it's quite satisfying actually. It's a nice puzzle and I would suspect it plays also well solo. So we try to build buildings which give you 50 points each, a lot of points. I know, right? right? Whether you pay 25 money on it or whether you pay 9 money on it, that's still 50 points. Exactly. There is a pit market that you can uh, sell as well to get some money. You lay tracks, and this is also the timer of the game, the tracks. You also use bricks to build houses. Um, it's a, a nice little puzzle, and I think I want to explore this more. And then we played, finally, Great Western Trail New Zealand. I wouldn't say Argentina. <laughs> we played we Argentina. Great Western Trail New Zealand because it was on our list um, and we really wanted to play it. We already have the original Great Western Trail and we're very fond of it. So we said we're going to give this a go. Uh, this one has uh, sheep instead of cows. Of course. And you can do two things with the sheep. You can sell them to the market still or you can shear them in the meantime and that will give you some extra money, mm -hmm. which is quite cool. Also, you have, because it's New Zealand, you have waterway and you can sell on waters so and you can yeah. get a lot of points from there as well a bit too sandboxy for my taste too many things to be doing in the game and i feel like it takes away from the core of great western trail that i'm used to mm. some people like it because it's more sandboxy and this is what they like but i really like the old version of the game where you do your thing i like the shearing mm. here i like the shearing very much and i think that's a very good thing uh, but i think that in combination with the waterway i think it's a bit too much for me 
I, I think uh, the uh, New Zealand version of the game for Greatest Australia is the more sandboxy one. I think Argentina is somewhere in the middle of the other two. The difference with uh, New Zealand is that your deck of cards becomes quite thick mm. and then your turn might be very long in the sense you have these cards that you discard, do you use a very minor ones, action, yeah. but you can draw another card. Oh, again, this card, draw another one, and you may do this five or six times because mm. your deck is very thick, right? So your turn might take a lot of, you might do a lot of stuff in your turn. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of possibilities of scoring and everything. I agree with Sandboxy. I think I liked it a bit more than you did, I want to say, but still I would prefer the original one. And then I played a solo-only game, a new for me game then, it's called uh, Deep Space uh, D6. It's uh, an older solo game where you have a spaceship and you try to overcome some uh, threats, either external threats or internal threats, that they're trying to destroy your, your, your spaceship. And you have these dice, which represent uh, workers of different types. And your workers might need to go to infirmary and you might have to save them, or you may uh, fix the shields of the spaceship or you may attack the threats so you can destroy them and so on and so forth. It's a nice little puzzle. I have played maybe three or four times so far. How many times did you win? Uh, zero. <laughs> I, I like playing solo, but I'm not, I don't think I'm a good solo player. <laughs> anyway, it's Deep Space Deep Six. It comes in a Deep Space D6. D6. It comes in a very small, nice box. So if you, if, if you like solo games, I Give it a go. It. Yeah. And then the last game, poof, finally, that we played in this quarter is called Survivor Live. And this is a preview copy that we got from the designer. And I'm afraid I cannot tell you anything anymore at the moment, but there is a video coming out with all the details and what the game does. So do keep an eye out and you'll find out more. So if my count is correct, I think it's 38 games 38. of the last quarter. While we were going through the games, I was counting them in my mind, you see? Quick maths. Mm. Mm. Well... That is it for today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you later. Bye. Bye.